Hi and welcome back to the channel, it's Sam here and today's video is all about optimum protein combination foods in a plant-based diet. So we're going to be talking about essential amino acids, I'm going to break down that situation for you, explain why it's of particular concern in a plant-based diet, whether you're vegetarian, vegan or just eating less meat or whatever, how to address that with certain food combinations or recipes. I'm going to list them all in the description as well, but please share this with anyone that's attempting a plant-based diet for whatever reason and wants optimum protein for recovery from exercise because I've looked for this information before on behalf of people that have asked me and been unable to find it so I've worked it all out and put it all together for this video today. So the concept here is essential amino acids. What I mean by that is the amino acids in protein that the body is unable to synthesize itself. So <clears throat> This could all be complete nonsense to you, so I'll break it down a bit further. Muscle protein is made out of 20 different amino acids, and the body can synthesize 11 of them all on its own. The remaining nine have to be brought in from elsewhere. In other words, they have to be brought in from the diet. So those specific amino acids are, well, I'll see if I can remember now, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, uh, tryptophan and valine. Those are the essential nine amino acids that you have to get from your diet. And of those nine, three of them are sometimes called branch chain amino acids, namely leucine, isoleucine and valine. Don't need to worry about that so much for the purposes of um, today's lecture, but those nine are all there in their entirety, all nine of them in decent amounts in animal proteins. So you eat a steak or egg or even egg white, chicken breast, fish, whatever like that, even milk, so animal produce as well, it will contain all of those nine I just reeled off. If you have a plant food, it will be higher in some of those and low to non-existent in some of the others, so you won't be getting all nine. Now, if you get all nine in the variety of things across your diet, that's pretty good. They don't have to be consumed in the same meal, but what I'm going to list today is a bunch of recipes or food combos that will give you all nine in a plant-based meal in 20 different meals. <laughs> I'm going to go through them and put them in the description for your, uh, you know, for your records, for your recipes, for your shopping list, whatever. What you get is a food that's that's a plant food. It'll basically be, unless it's nuts or seeds, which contains all three micronutrients, all the other plant foods will be a protein and carbohydrate combination. And that the carbohydrate component of a plant food will be either a starch or a monosaccharide or disaccharide, a single sugar or double sugar, like, you know, glucose being a monosaccharide or uh, sucrose being a disaccharide made up of uh, glucose and fructose bound together. That's kind of the carbohydrate side, but when it comes to the protein side of those plant foods that aren't your nuts and seeds, so basically your fruits, your vegetables, um, your grains, the protein side will be a bunch of amino acids, but not a decent amount of all nine of those essential ones that I, I listed off. So what you can do is combine one type of plant food with another type where the missing bits are compensated by the other choice so that you get all nine in the combination there. So I can't remember all the, all the 20 that I've drafted here, so I am gonna, I'm going to just pull it up here. And I'm going to break down a couple of them. I won't break down what's specifically missing and combined in all 20 of them, but this is just to give you an idea of the concept, and then I'll list the remaining 20, put them in the, dis in the description, and then you'll have the perfect shopping list and information for complete protein in a plant-based diet situation. And even though the body can use them if they're consumed in the same day, you have that peace of mind that you're getting all nine in the same meal, and some people do only eat once or twice a day, so it could be useful for 
anyone doing that sort of thing. So number one, a combination of rice and beans. You've got beans, which are high in lysine, but they're very low in methionine, but the methionine is very high in rice. So you put that all together, beans and rice, and it's all fixed. Next example, uh, hummus and whole wheat pitta. So the chickpeas in the hummus, again, are very high in lysine, but low in methionine. Um, but the whole wheat in the pitta contains a decent amount of methionine and you've got it covered there. Number three, peanut butter on whole wheat bread. The peanut butter, it's kind of low in methionine, but that's complemented by the whole wheat again, a bit like the hummus and whole wheat pitta example. Then you've got um, corn and beans, corn and beans. Corn is low in lysine and tryptophan, but beans are high in tryptophan and lysine. So you've got that combo, that combo there. So I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to labour the point. We've got all 20 to list, but the, the whole 20 starting from the top that I've, I've pieced together here is rice and beans as a meal, hummus and whole wheat pizza, peanut butter on whole wheat bread, lentils with rice or barley, corn and beans, quinoa salad, soy products. So soy is one of the very few plant foods that does contain a decent amount of all nine. So that could be on its own. Chia seeds with oats, a trail mix with nuts and seeds, spinach salad with almonds and chickpeas, buckwheat with vegetables, veggie burger made with beans or lentils and grains together, pasta and peas, stir fry with tofu and brown rice, uh, seton, that's wheat gluten with legumes, number 15, um, oatmeal with almond butter, spelt bread with peanut butter, barley with lentil soup, whole wheat noodles with edam edamine, edamame, sorry, uh, chickpea and quinoa salad. So there you go, that's 20 that I've rattled off. I'm going to put them all in the description. But I hope this would be useful to anyone trying to attempt a plant-based thing. I'm not plant-based myself, I'm an omnivore and sometimes do carnivore kind of phases when I'm trying to reduce um, other, other nutrients, like reduce the carbohydrate in my diet and manipulate that. But this could be useful to someone out there. Obviously it doesn't, you know, fix all of nutrition because you've got you've got other considerations that with your plant choices you can't reduce and manipulate out carbohydrate in your diet like you can by just eating the meat and the animal products and also some of the other micronutrients are not in their most bioavailable form so you've got a lack of heme iron when you have um, the iron in a plant food but there's several examples like that so i'm not saying that i advocate for that sort of thing or that it fixes all problems but that list of the 20 there does fix the problem of getting com what they call a complete protein, which means basically the full spectrum of the nine essential amino acids within a meal um, with loads of options for you there. So that'll be useful from the protein or complete protein standpoint. And I hope that you've learned something today about the theory behind it and what exactly constitutes what we call a complete protein with that uh, full spectrum of the nine essential amino acids there. So little bit of a boring theory video. We'll be back in the gym soon with something a little bit more action-packed. But if you found this useful and uh, educational, please do share it. Please consider subscribing. Send it on to your vegan, veggie or plant-based friends. And I'll be back with uh, some more heavy lifting soon. Probably some more eating challenges. And I wish you the best of luck with your progress. Cheers.